Michelle Hendricks. Yes. Yes. Uh, we call uh, <coughs> Mr. John Brakey at the stand in the back of the room. Just so the court knows, I, I, I've waived the application to this witness. John. Yes. Can you spell your last name? V R A K E Y. And Brakey, Sir, if you could come around and have a seat here in the witness stand. John Robert Sprakey. Uh, do you have any formal computer training? No, I don't. But you're very familiar with the use of computers, are you not? I would say yes. Okay. Have you been involved uh, in election integrity issues at the county and state levels? Absolutely. I think, are you a member of Audit AZ? Yes, I am. Could you tell the judge just briefly what that is? Audit AZ is Americans United for Democracy, Integrity, and Transparency. It started really, I guess, on uh, November 2nd, around 3.30. I was a cluster captain and I had four precincts and there were some really strange things going on. Mr. March, uh, do you know Mr. Jim March? Yes, I do. You know, he's consulted with the Democratic Party on this lawsuit, right? Absolutely. Uh, would you guys consider yourselves good friends? Yes, I would. Okay. And you also have pretty much the same view with regard to uh, people, election equipment? I would say on that we do. But he's a libertarian, I'm a Democrat. Somehow been noted in the record before. Okay. But uh, okay, and I take it you have no no fondness or uh, for the people or election equipment. I think that. I have a problem with the equipment, but you know, Debolt is an old company. It's been around a long time. In fact, uh, Jim tells me that uh, Elliot Ness was one of the chairmen of the company. Right. And we bought it in 2002. Right. But in specific, I'm, I should talk to you about the gem system. Yes. Probably more appropriate. I would say so. Yeah, and the gem system, uh, you don't particularly like that. Well, I look at it this way. You know, if a person with an eighth grade education, which you know, I quit school in the eighth grade, could go ahead and change passwords easy, go ahead and uh, you know flip elections or make adjustments, do flip checks because you know learn to take the audit logs that we have got and looked at it and looking for to check the integrity of elections, and we have found some very severe problems. Now, that's kind of what I wanted you to get into. First, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, Mr. Marsh testified in deposition that you have an amazing ability to see patterns. Yes. So, right now, I take it, um, how are you making a living right now? Well, I have property in Mexico. Mm -hmm. My wife works two jobs. This the thing I'm doing, I think, is that important because, what, like I said, what happened November 2nd, 2004, the experience I went through. You know, it's not a very good situation when you're walking into a precinct at night and all of a sudden a bunch of people start yelling at and start calling you a liberal scum, demon, and a pagan. And then you kind of figure out there's something going on. And so basically that investigation led me into a situation that why were they doing this? You know, they can't be doing it everywhere. And then I discover a guy named Nathan Sproul was paid $8.3 million, it was the sixth largest expense the Republican National Committee had, you become a little concerned. And you really start wondering, you know, are we making believe, do we live in a country that makes believe that it's another country? And that's something that's very painful for me. Okay. Um, but, but again, the, the question is, with respect to your ability to recognize patterns in databases and other types of things, you would say you have that ability, a pretty innate ability to do that. I would say so. The reason I called you to stand, Mr. Brady, is um, <clears throat> for something you just mentioned earlier, and that is your ability to switch passwords. Uh, let, let me back yeah. up a second. 
here, you have access to a copy of GEMS, is that correct? I certainly do. Okay, and do you know whether you have, you don't have a license from Depot? No, I don't. Or Premier or whoever owns the place? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, so you've been working with that in, in some detail, haven't you? Yes, I have. All right. Now, could you explain to the judge, you don't have to get up there, I want you to okay. talk to the judge, and explain to him what you just alluded to earlier in your testimony as to how you do this password switch. Well, you know, I have a uh, channel figure brought a document for that, but I have the second part, third part. I made three documents, and I, I thought it was very important to be able to go ahead and show people how insecure this thing is. Because, you know, first off, I believe that most fraud that happens in business, and I was a businessman, I've had big corporations, happens internally. All the work that I've done has shown me that. Basically, when we talk about part one of a, something I put together, and I believe that they have a document that would be more easily to be able to show, you would go ahead and take the GEMS program, and the first thing you could wind up doing is to make a new database. That's the first thing. And you can call it anything that you want. Do you think it would illustrate your testimony to the judge if you just drew it out on a sheet of paper? Not really. It wouldn't work out that way. But you know, okay. if we had, Sorry. Uh, Sorry yeah, there's other ways we could do it pretty simply. So basically, you go in, new. And then you would go ahead and enter in a password. Now, what I enter in for a password is I use the word Mingo, it's five letters. And this is what I find very interesting about the encryption. Because when I go ahead and put those five letters in small caps in, and then I go ahead, set it up, then I close it. Then I go into Windows Explorer, okay? And then I go ahead and open it up inside of Microsoft Access. From there, I go ahead and find passwords because you have all your tables laid right on out. When I get in there, I find that Mingo is no longer there. It's encrypted. And what's incredible is it's in 13 letters. Some are uppercase, some are lowercase. Meaning that it is really quite an encrypted system. But the problem is you don't need it. You can just go right in the back door very simply. And you don't even have to have the uh, gem system working to go ahead and modify or do anything you want to do. And I just find that is to be a horrible situation. It's very scary to know that. And so then I will go ahead, I copy my word Mingo, which is encrypted in 13 letters. I move it over, and then I'll open up the other MBA file, like for example, the Alaska database. Okay or other databases. I want you to know there's a lot of databases out there, okay? It's not like just there's Alaska or Tennessee. They're all over the place. Well, I'm ADD, so to tell the whole story, you try, whatever. And uh, basically, okay. So I can go ahead, right? Yes, we've given a pretty broad question, so go ahead. Okay. So I'll go ahead and take the encrypted word, Mingo, encrypted, 13 letters. I will open up, let's say, the Alaska database, go to the same thing, and I drop it right in there. Then I close it. Now I can go ahead and take that database, put it right back into GEMS, just drag it over, drop it right in the file. Then I type in Mingo, boom, it's open. And that's a pretty scary thought to know that. But the security is that bad. Because, like I said, it doesn't have to be open to do that. You're saying that this was a relatively simple thing to do? It's so simple that it's, it's extremely scary to know that I could take a database, get a key ring, stick it in the computer, okay? Then I could just drag over a copy of that database, put it in my ring, take it home, stick it in my computer, open it up, change a whole bunch of things, put it back in, and the audit log or nothing will detect that it was done. Okay. 
you agree that part of the goal of this lawsuit the process that we're involved with is to build some sort of political consensus, consensus so that we can change the uh, vote counting machines that we use? Say that again, Mark? It's part of what your involvement in this lawsuit and the involvement uh, of other like-minded individuals and interest in this particular case is to generate change in the legislation <coughs> regarding what we can use and we can't use in the way of electronic voting machine. What my motivation is? Why? Yeah. My motivation is, is I'm a grandfather and I love my granddaughter. I got another one coming. And I believe I live in a wonderful country that's given me a lot. And that it's a great place, but it really certainly has a very ugly side. That sometimes I wonder if a lot of people are in denial and have amnesia. And it's a very painful thing to know that and to see what I see, to see what's going on. Mr. Craig, thank you today for your testimony. That's thank all you. Cross again? No. our nation, too many to ignore. We turned out in numbers they'd never seen before. I should know, dear, I've been voting here since the Second World War. My name is Amos Connolly, now they're telling me my vote don't matter They purged it from the roll What they gained Cannot compare with what they stole This is my democracy Don't you go telling me My vote don't matter anymore And is not worth fighting for The fix was in that's all she wrote, they did not win Our hearts, our minds, our votes With what is known Evidence is clear, I'm not alone There are thousands of us here This is my democracy You won't go telling me My vote don't matter anymore And is not worth fighting for This is our democracy We'll fight to keep it free You won't go telling me Our vote don't matter anymore Our vote is well worth fighting for Our vote is well worth fighting for